Psalms 47 simply says, clap your hands, all ye people, shout unto God with a voice of triumph. He shall subdue the people under us and the nation under our feet. He shall choose our inheritance for us, the excellency of Jacob whom he loved, Selah. God is gone up with a shout. The Lord, with the sound of a trumpet, praises to God. Sing praises unto our king. Sing praises, for God is a king of all the earth. He reigneth over the heavens. He sitteth upon his throne of holiness. The princes of his people are gathered together, even the people of Abraham. For the shield of the earth belongs to God. He is greatly exalted. Let us look to the throne at this time. Father, we lift our hands to you. Father, at this time, we lift our hands to you because we have no other help. Father, we lift our hands to you in assurance this morning, knowing that you will save us from this pestilence. Lord, we ask that you will put a shield around the earth at this time. Lift up those that are sick. Lift up those that are discouraged. Lift up those that are depressed. Father, lift up those who have been brought out of sickness. Father, this morning, we know that our assurance will give us a blessed hope, knowing that, Lord, soon that you will come. Father, these times don't make us fearful. These times make us aware, knowing that you are, are the master doctor that you have the antidote to our physical health and our spiritual health at this time. Lord, we're seeking restoration for those who have walked away from you. Lord, we're asking them to turn around, repent, and come back to you. Lord, we're seeking confession from you today. Lord, because there are many of us who have fallen short of your glory. But Lord, through all this, we recognize how good you've been to us. We recognize how you are saving, Lord. We recognize how your hand is long and your memory is short. How you remember those who have asked for your help. How you remember those who are lost and you come seeking for us. Father, at this time, Lord, we know that everything that we have is of you. And Lord, we're asking now that as we grow closer to you because of this pandemic, Father, that we open the scriptures and read your word and grow closer to you. Lord, Hear us today and bless us as we're in this church service today that your word will be heard not just here but around the world and that souls will be saved. In Jesus' name I pray. Let everyone say amen. It's Mother's Day weekend, isn't it? And... Since it's Mother's Day, we all have a mother or had a mother. And so you think, man, I guess I'm a child. Most of us, we have parents who always, will always think of us as children. And so it reminded me of the fact that we are children of the king. The hymn says, my father is rich in houses and land. Yes, I'm, I'm a child of the king a child of the king and so we sing this song who am i that the highest king would welcome me i'm a child of the king who am i that the highest king would welcome me i was lost but he brought me Yes. 
I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Praise God. Praise Him from whom all blessing flows. Come on, praise Him if you believe that God deserves the glory and honor and praise. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say glory to God. Praise glory Him. God. When I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that He's done for me, my soul cries out hallelujah. Thank God for blessing me. Thank God for lifting me up. Thank God for keeping me alive. Come on, praise God. Praise God. Wherever you are right now, if you're in your car, praise at home, him. praise Him. Come on, praise, praise God. He deserves him. it. He deserves it. Praise, praise him. him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Oh, Jesus. Bless and say. Savior with us. As we celebrate the special Mother's Day weekend on behalf of the pastoral family, we welcome all of you here to our Ridge SDA worship service 
And of course, a special, special welcome to all of our mothers today. Amen. And speaking of mothers, God made a wonderful mother, a mother whose love never grows old. He made her smile like sunshine, and he molded her with a heart of gold. In her eyes, he placed bright shining stars. In her cheeks, fair roses you see. Yes, God made a wonderful mother, and he gave that dear mother to you and to me. So today we honor and we bless our mothers with words and acts of love and praise while we tell about their goodness and their kind and loving ways. Mothers, may you all have the joy that your heart can hold today and all the blessings a life can unfold. Again, happy Mother's Day tomorrow. Now, as our tradition typically is at the Ridge SDA Church, we always had a special cassage for all of our mothers on our Mother's Day Sabbath and also a nice Mother's Day brunch on Sunday. But with our situation with COVID-19, we just weren't able to do that this year. However, Dr. Patrick Carruthers and his lovely wife Mercedes Carruthers and the men's ministry department has sent out Mother's Day cards to all of the mothers in our congregation. So again, we hope that you've received your cards and we again wish you a very, very happy Mother's Day weekend. Just one other announcement. Remember that the month of May and the month of June, these months are typically our graduation months. And so our education department here at Ridge, we've been working very hard to find some innovative way to recognize our graduates, even though they won't be here with us. And so please let us know who your graduates are, whether it's from kindergarten to 12th grade or college level perhaps, perhaps university, graduate school, or any other program, let us know. We want to recognize in a special way our graduates this month and in June. So far, I've only received one notification. I'm sure there are more graduates out there. So again, please feel free to contact Sister Kevra Bartholomew, Brother Basil Worrell, or myself, Dr. Heather Knight. Thank you. Good morning, church. It's good to be here in the house of the Lord. It's good to be worshiping with you in your homes, in your cars, where, wherever you are right now. Uh, we're going to continue with our worship service, but there are certain things that we can continue to do during this uh, shelter-in-place time that we're in, especially for our mothers, grandmothers, and anyone that's home alone or home uh, right now. Number one, uh, please don't assume that people need help. Ask them if they need some type of help. And if we can do it, if you can do it, if the church can help in any way, we will certainly do that. And number two, let's help set up uh, video calls for our seniors, our mothers, our fathers, those at home. Uh, every Sunday at 6 o'clock uh, uh, East Coast time, my family, we get together on Zoom calls. And all the grandkids have play dates on Zoom, and it is magnificent. So many of us don't have the technological skills to set that up. Let's see if we can help set that up for folks who are home alone and need that. Uh, we can help uh, our seniors and those home alone set up video calls with their doctors or tele telephone calls with their doctors if they need uh, to see a doctor. Or, uh, so please uh, help do that for some of our seniors. Uh, our seniors or our mothers, they need to continue to exercise, even if just walking around the house, walking down, up and down the block. People need to continue to exercise uh, to a certain degree. And, and, and finally, let's start to plan uh, our eventual reopening. 
We want to have a fabulous reopening where everyone comes together, where uh, we can have a family dinner, a family game night. Let's start thinking about that and planning that. So there are things that we can do right now to help those who are home alone. God bless you. Thank you very much. And let's continue our worship service.
villagers raced to the airstrip, singing and dancing when mission pilot Gary Roberts landed at Seminka, a remote village in the Indonesian province of Papua. It had taken the villagers 10 years to cut down the trees by hand to clear the way for an airstrip at their mountainous village, and Gary's mission plane was the first to land. This was a big event. As Gary stepped out of the plane, the crowd grew silent. Their singing and dancing stopped. Is this a Seventh-day Adventist plane? A man asked. The villagers had seen the Three Angels logo on the airplane's tail. Gary was surprised. Seminka was a village previously accessible only by a long trek by foot, so he hadn't expected the villagers to have heard about the Adventist church. The villagers soon told him that many of them were keeping the Sabbath. The reason, they said, was because of a Seventh-day Adventist dog. The story started several years earlier, just across the border in Papua New Guinea, when an Adventist pastor named Moses and a lay pastor named Darius had the same dream on the same night. In the morning, one said, I had a dream last night. The other said, I did too, but I didn't want to tell you. They both had seen an angel in the dream, and the angel said, go to Saminka. A few days later, the two men set off on the three-day hike to Saminka. Arriving at the village, they announced evangelistic meetings would be held every evening for a week under a tree on the far side of the village. But by the day of the first meeting, Pastor Moses fell ill with malaria. He was terribly sick, and the villagers predicted that he would die. But if he gets better, then we will listen to him at the meeting, they said. All day, Pastor Moses was sick, but at 5 p.m., he suddenly felt better. He took a bath and preached. Afterward, he fell very ill again. This happened all week. He was sick until 5 p.m., recovered, took a bath, and preached. Then he sank back into bed. At the meetings, he told the people about the Sabbath and cautioned against eating unclean meat such as pork. Wild pigs are a popular dish in the Papua Mountains. When the week ended, Pastor Moses made an appeal, but no one came forward. Pastor Moses and Darius returned home deeply disappointed. They wondered why they had had the dream without any results. Back in Suminka, life resumed as normal until Saturday morning. The village's best hunting dog, Dolby, got up and headed down the trail. His owner and other villagers thought he was onto something, so they followed. Dolby went to the tree where the missionary had spoken and sat down. The villagers thought that was strange. The next Saturday, Dolby did the same thing. He got up, walked over to the tree, and sat down. He refused to hunt on Saturdays. The villagers had noticed that Dolby had stopped eating pork, too. He refused to hunt for wild pigs and other unclean animals. Dolby has become a Seventh-day Adventist, one villager said. If he worships on Sabbath, we should too, said another. Many villagers began to keep the Sabbath and stopped eating unclean foods. Gary, the mission pilot, was so excited when he heard the story, and he later called Pastor Moses. The pastor was some distance away from Saminka, so he contacted Darius and told him to plan on spending a year at the village, teaching the people about Bible truths. Today, about half of the village of 200 adults and children worship on Sabbath, and 21 people have been baptized. Dolby still doesn't eat unclean food. The villagers say he is a very healthy dog. Jesus cares for all the children. you in the name of our blessed Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God would have me take this teaching and preaching time 
to turn in our Bibles to 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter. And I'll read verses um, 6 to 11. 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter, verses 6 through 11. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Uh, do thy diligence to come shortly unto me. For Demoth hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica, Crescens to Galatia, Titus unto Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Uh, tell, take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. I am most assuredly an expository preacher of the word of Jesus Christ. And it is my pleasure, duty, and obligation to transmit messages from God to his people accurately, without error, come what may. These messages from a loving, merciful God to us is profitable and beneficial for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction, so we will be in a right relationship with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, that we will be thoroughly equipped to do all good works. And that's the reason why I'm a manuscript preacher, because I want to make sure that I get this message from God absolutely correct for you. So please, at this moment, intently sit back and inculcate these encouraging words of support as we journey to the kingdom of God. And as a homiletics professor, I teach my students that on Sabbath, we are not here to entertain, but through the foolishness of preaching, we speak a word, the word sent from God. The title of this message for you today is Home Alone. Home Alone. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, please attend every person, every household under the sound of my voice. Uh, let them receive this word from you, and we'll give you all the honor and glory. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, amen. From the judgment hall of Caesar, Paul returned to his Mamertine jail cell, realizing that he had gained for himself only a, a brief reprieve from certain Roman death. Now, sitting day after day alone in his gloomy Roman cell, knowing that at a word or a nod from Nero, his life might be sacrificed. Paul thought of Timothy, and he was determined to send for Timothy from Ephesus, where Timothy was left to care for the church there. Paul and Timothy were bound together by an affection unusually deep and strong. Since his conversion, Timothy had shared Paul's labors and, and sufferings, and the friendship between these two had grown stronger, deeper, and more sacred until all that a son could be shared with and loved by our honored father, the spirit of prophecy says, Timothy was to the aged, toil-worn apostle. It is little wonder that in this loneliness and solitude, Paul longed to see Timothy. 
This perspective of being a, a devout follower of Jesus Christ is in contradiction to many people's views of a life in Christ. Very often there is a kind of glamour and, and excitement that is attached to the cause of Christ. There are those who become Seventh-day Adventist Christians and come only as spectators. There are those who want to be involved in the glory of this moment, but they do not want to be involved in the nastiness of the engagement. Many times we only see the, the glitter and the glamour of what are the results of sacrifice, devotion, rehearsals, and, and dedication on the part of authentic disciples who, who, who are not concerned with the consequences of becoming involved in the engagement, even if it means their own death. With this commitment to Christian discipleship, comes many times a loneliness, a loneliness that you need to be aware of. Uh, there are no greater words in the scripture that carries the heart pain and the loneliness of discipleship than these words that have come from the pen of the Apostle Paul in 2 Timothy. Paul is here, not only an old man with physical infirmities, but as a result of a conflict in Troyes, the city of Troyes, Paul is a resident of a local jail in Rome. Paul uh, uh, picks up his pen, and with faltering hands, he begins to write to his protege, Timothy. Paul wants to give Timothy all the advantages of his wisdom and, and experiences as he can. So, so Paul begins his letter, and he writes, in essence, uh, there is something, as I come now to the close of my days, the, the, the end of my years, that I want to give you, Timothy, and that is to, to, to preach the gospel. Do not give people uh, discourses on worldly things. Do not share with them sociology or psychology. But Timothy, your charge is to preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort, and with all long suffering and doctrine, I realize that, that, that my time is nearly up. And I must pass on the, the mantle of responsibility to you, Timothy. W when I look back over my life, I can honestly say that I have fought a good fight. I, I have kept the faith. A and I'm not worried about where uh, I'm headed because I have finished my course. And henceforth, there is laid up for me uh, a crown of righteousness. We all need to be looking for our crowns of righteousness, amen? But the reality of this situation is that everybody is not able to make the same testimony as Paul. Everybody can't say that they have fought a good fight because something has gotten in the way. Paul says, I realize my days are uh, headed uh, before me. And there are many, many days behind me here on this earth. In a little while, I will be presented to Emperor Nero uh, in a Roman Colosseum. But Timothy, your race is still in front of you uh, to preach this gospel of Jesus Christ faithfully. Uh, uh, and then suddenly, the tone and mood of this letter changes. After the so solemn charge to Timothy in verses 1, 2, and 5, and the eloquent and confident farewell of verses 6 through 8, the expectation of imminent death seems to vanish. And Paul writes, Timothy, I want you to come and see about me. Uh, whatever you are doing, drop it, and please come and see about me. Stop the Revelation seminars you are conducting. 
Stop the Breathe Free program you are running. Stop working uh, on the, uh, the building program and, and, and come sit with me in my lonely prison cell for a while. Be- because you see, Timothy, Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world, and, and he has gone to Thessalonica. Crescens is gone to Galatia, and Titus is in Dalmatia, and only Luke is with me. Am I in the word? Uh, Paul says, I am lonely here in this cell. This is an awesome page in the Bible. Look closely uh, and you should be able to see the tears that are on this page from Paul. It's stained with the tears of a man who has given his entire life to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And now he finds himself in a position where he has to write that Demas has forsaken me and only Luke is with me. And God wants me to talk about loneliness this Sabbath because there are those of you today and those of us today who understand something of the problem of loneliness, especially because of this shelter in place that we're grappling with right now. Perhaps there is someone under uh, the sound of my voice who understands what it's like to be lonely. Perhaps there is someone who finds themselves in a situation where, try as you might, there is nobody around you or nobody who wants to be around you. There are those from many different generations that find themselves living alone. And and the place you dwell is as empty as Paul's prison cell. Nobody there to talk to. You are just alone. There is nobody there to share your concerns with because you are just there alone. Nobody there to irritate or bother you because you are home alone, by yourself, experiencing loneliness. And and, and as you know, there's a difference between being alone and being lonely. There are times when, when I prefer to be alone. You know, my wife can tell you when I am writing a sermon or, or praying for your sins as, as your pastor or for your continual blessings, I welcome the solemnity of being alone to commune with my Lord and Savior. I, I, I need that time alone to get a, a, a sweet hour of prayer. Aloneness is something that, that I choose. But loneliness is something that comes as no choice of my own. When you are looking for someone and you can't find them, that's loneliness. When you are hungry for uh, companionship and you don't have it, when, when you need somebody to fill the empty places of your life, yet you can't find that person, and it makes you lonely. That that is where Paul was. Paul said, I I have done everything I have known to do for God. I I have fought a good fight. I, I have kept the faith. I have finished the course laid out for me by God. But now, I'm lonesome now. I'm lonely. I need somebody. And and I'm lonely because uh, Demas has forsaken me. You know, uh, you must listen to the words of Paul clearly. He did not say that Demas has left me. He said that Demas has forsaken me. There's a difference between being left and even being forgotten than being forsaken. Uh, If I'm forsaken, maybe in the course of someone's busy, excuse me, if I'm forgotten, maybe in the course of someone's busy life, uh, I just maybe slip from their memory, out of sight, out of mind, as it were. 
But when I am forsaken, that means somebody I was depending on, someone I was relying on, someone I have put my confidence in. That person has let me down and deserted me. How many of us here are where we are because somebody has forsaken us? Uh, I was counting on them, but they let me down. It's a terrible thing to be forsaken. I remember Jesus one day out on Golgotha's hill shouted out through the excruciating pain of the cross, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? It's awful to be forsaken. Paul says, Demas has forsaken me. And not only that, but Crescens has been called to a church in Galatia, and Titus has accepted a, a real good pastoral position in Dalmatia, somewhere along the coast of the Adriatic Sea. All of my fellow workers that were with me are gone now. And then Paul writes in verse 14 that Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. Uh, watch out for the coppersmith. Alexander the coppersmith. This Alexander was a metal worker, and uh, he was also a loyal follower of Jesus and a part of Paul's entourage. And now it seems that this same Alexander has done Paul much harm. This was someone in the church that did him this evil. Evil people in the church contributed to the lonely condition of Paul. And, and, and then Paul writes this. At my first defense, no man stood with me. How much more does Paul have to endure as, a, as an apostle and a follower of Jesus Christ? He, he is out there all by himself. And when they put him on trial for his faith in Jesus Christ, there was no witnesses for his defense. Paul had no attorney for his defense to plead his case. He had to stand there before the mighty Roman court all by himself. All of this uh, flies in the face of everything that we know about the Apostle Paul. Uh, Paul was the one who, who wrote, nothing can separate me from the love of God in Christ Jesus. It, it's right there in Romans, the eighth chapter. Uh, not, not height, nor depth, nor angels, nor principalities, or powers. And here Paul writes, I'm lonesome. Uh, it, it was Paul who confidently wrote that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And now Paul says, I'm lonely now. Wasn't it Paul that said, all things work together for good to them that love the Lord, to them that are called unto his? But, but, but Paul is lonesome now. And, and that just lets me know that no matter how secure you are in the Lord, there is always something in this old sinful world that brings you back uh, to the weakness of our own humanity. I, I, I don't care how long you have been with the Lord's remnant church, you can get lonely sometime. There, there is a tear that, that travels down your cheeks sometime. We all cry sometime. We all weep bitter tears sometimes. Even the Bible said that Jesus wept. So I want to briefly explore with you how to deal with the problem of loneliness uh, because uh, I have heard the heart pain of, of some of you today as I call around uh, my parish here. Uh, how can you overcome loneliness. I want you to remember that our deliverance from loneliness or any trial is not in our hands, 
but it is in the arms of a loving, merciful, compassionate, almighty God. If you are in any kind of trouble, the thing that is going to get you out is not the one that is standing by you, but it is the rock underneath you. Look at the last clause of verse 17 in our chapter. Paul says that he was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. Can, can anyone here say that they were delivered out of the mouth of a lion? I got to tell you something. It's, it's one thing to be in the vicinity of the lion. It's another thing to be in the neighborhood of the lion or in the district of a lion. But it's altogether different to be in the mouth of a lion. <laughs> what Paul is talking about is that uh, when Satan has you in his grasp, when the devil has you the same way a beast of prey would have you, when that old dragon has you in its mouth and death is right up in your face, when, when Satan has you just like he had Job. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Uh, family problems, death and funerals, employment problems, uh, financial mess, sickness, corona virus, sores and boils all over your body, no way out and no way up. Then Paul says, notwithstanding, the Lord delivered me from the mouth of the lion. When you remember how you had to go up the rough side of the mountain, when you remember how you had to stand sometimes all by yourself, when you remember how loved ones let you down, when you remember the lonely night and the bitter tears, when you recall the times when you didn't have enough money to make ends meet, when, when my remembrance brings me back to the pain and the bumps and the bruises and the, and the heartaches, and, and I am still here to talk about it and even laugh about it in spite of it all, nevertheless, However, even so, but although, despite it all, contrary to the facts, notwithstanding, the Lord stood by my side. Has the Lord ever stood by your side? Well, I'm sure somebody here can say that the Lord stood by your side. That when somebody turned their backs on you, the Lord remained your refuge, and your strength. When friends forsake you, it was the Lord who was a very present help in a time of trouble. Uh, when you couldn't see your way, uh, can you say, the Lord stood by my side? When you didn't have a dime, the Lord stood by your side. Do you realize that is, that is why you are alive today? Because the Lord was right by your side protecting you and, and loving you. You are not here because you are smart. You are not here because you are here because the Lord stood by your side. You are not here because of your money. You are here because the Lord stood by your side. You are not here because of your position, your, your, your family members, but you are here because the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost stood by your side. Where would I be if it weren't for Jesus Christ by my side? Aren't you glad that it was the Lord and, and not some unreliable friend that stood by your side? Uh, not children, parents, or spouse, but the Lord carries us through. So, are you lonely? Uh, are you lonely? It, it is incongruent to call yourself a Christian and still say that you are lonely. Christianity and loneliness are mutually exclusive terms. They can't exist together. If you are lonely and you are trying to find a friend, I want you to know that I have found a friend who is all the world to me, whose love 
is ever true. He is with me in the midnight hour. He, he, he puts food on my table. He is also my friend when I need someone to talk to. Anytime you think you are lonely, if it's in the day, go out and look up at the sun. When you think you are lonely and it's at night, uh, look up at the stars and the moon. When the radio won't keep you company and the TV can't help you and the internet doesn't excite you, you just stand on your back porch and say, I've seen the lightning flash and I've heard the thunder roll, but I have felt sin's breakers dashing trying to conquer my soul. But I've heard the voice of Jesus telling me still to fight on. He promised, yes, God promised never to leave me. No, never to leave me alone. No, never alone. No, never alone. He promised never to leave me alone. He, he, he claimed me for his own. No, we are never alone. Have you ever been in your home by yourself and all of a sudden you felt as if somebody was there with you? Have you ever been in your car all by yourself and you just don't know how or who drove the last five miles home? That is because you are never alone. Jesus promised to be by your side and never to leave you alone. If you want a friend today that won't treat you like Demas or, or Alexander that Coppersmith treated Paul, then, 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 then please come and find my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. What a friend we have in Jesus. And I got to tell you something. In times like these, we need a Savior. In times like these, we need a Savior. Jesus Christ is the one we need in times like these. like this you need a savior in times like this you need a
back to all the happy times that we've had with family, children, friends, our work experiences, our school experiences. But they will also draw us to sorrow and, and look at all the mistakes we've made in our lives. And it may draw us to, to become sad. During those times, you must turn to Jesus. So there's someone you need special prayer. When you not only think about the past, but you contemplate what the future holds for you. If that is your situation, why don't you stand where you are and come, come close to the television set, the, the monitor, or the screen for special prayer. Elder Roll, could you come up and give us special prayer? There, there's a lot of folks home alone or home with other folks and they need special prayer right now. Father, which art in heaven, dear Lord, there are those out there that have been listening to this message and their hearts have been warm. You've touched them. Many have been in a depressed state because they feel that no one cares, no one calls. They feel that no one is talking to them or there's no interaction. But Lord, as long as they pray to you, there is a connection. So, Father, at this time, we're asking that for those who have felt alone, those who have been in darkness of depression, those who may have even contemplated suicide, Father, at this time, Lord, I ask that you would grab them, reach them, and Lord, let them know that you are by their side. Father, for the sheep that has gone astray, Father, the sheep now is calling for you, and we know that you won't stop until all have been brought home. Dear Jesus, we're asking today that we would recognize that you are always by our side. As Pastor said, you'll never leave us, never forsake us. Yes, Lord. And Father, for that, we love you. For that, we know that you will commit yourself to finding your sheep and bringing them home. And Father, for those who have decided to turn their life over to Christ today because of this powerful message. Dear Jesus, I pray in your name, Lord, that you would seal that name in heaven until we're able to come together and rejoice here on this earth like there's rejoicing in heaven. And Father, now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, yes. dominion, and power, yes, God. both now yes. and forever. Amen. Have a happy Sabbath and a blessed Mother Day to all the mothers out there. Amen. Amen. Final words. If you need to speak to someone, if you need help, call the pastor. 
Call one of the elders. Call one of the deaconesses. Call another church member. Let us know what's going on. Yes. And we'll be there for you. God bless you. This rock is Jesus. Yes, he is the one. This rock is Jesus. The only one. Be very sure. Right.